Boom, people, welcome back to the show. Today, we're gonna talk about the four different fund types. I get this question a ton. Bridger, what's the difference between funds that can advertise, that funds that can't advertise? Which funds can I raise money from accredited investors from or non-accredited investors from? How does this all play together? And the answer is it depends, and it depends on these things I'm about to talk about in this video. These four different things, there's pros and cons to each one, and you can decide which type of fund you would like to use. Again, these funds work for real estate funds, hedge funds, private equity funds, crypto funds, I mean, really any fund type. We've worked with hundreds, literally hundreds of funds in our programs and stuff and help them launch and scale. We've seen everything from almond farm funds to solar farm funds all under the sun. And these are the four most common types of funds that get launched and we'll walk through all the pros and cons in here. And as you guys know, on our YouTube videos, we give away $100 to some of the best comments on each video. So here we go from Armani says, my key takeaways is from the Jimmy Rex interview, which was amazing. Go check that video out. He says, giving with no expectations at all, be a dependable person that gets stuff done and three, figure out how to help people you wanna work with. Armand, you got $100 coming your way. Send us a message. I don't have your email, so send me a message with your email on Instagram or YouTube, whatever. We'll send you $100. And if you wanna get entered, comment and like this video below. Every video we go back, we'll try to give away $100 for the best comments on those videos. All right, with that being said, let's hop into the four different fund types. Now there's two big questions on fund types you got to ask yourself. Number one is who can I raise money from? And number two, can I advertise? Now you might be asking, Bridget, those are two weird questions. Why are you asking those questions? It's because the SEC loves to limit what we can and can't do on who we can raise money from and how we advertise to those people. Now the first two fund types are how 99% of all capital in the world is raised. It's under what's called Regulation D-506, okay? Reg D-506 is how the more money, this is like the mecca of funds. Like this is where all funds raise money from. You have a 506B, which I'm gonna put up here, and a 506C, which I'm gonna put right here. These two fund types are the kings. I mean, 99% of all private capital in the world literally flows through a Regulation D-506. And Reg D-506, all that is, is a SEC filing number for this code, okay? (laughs) Reg D-506B or 506C. Now over here, in just a second, we'll talk about two other fund types that have recently surfaced and come out and that you can use crowdfunding and other types of things to raise capital for your offering. But first, let's talk 506B. So 506B, let's ask these two questions. Who can I raise money from? Inside of a 506B, you can raise money from 35 non-accredited and unlimited accredited investors. However, there's subsections that limit you. At the most, you can raise from 1,999 investors. It says unlimited accredited investors, but actually it limits you at 1,999 investors under a 3C1 exemption, or it's gonna be limited to 99 investors from accredited. Now, what am I talking about? Accredited investor, qualified purchaser, what's going on here? Wait no longer, back to the whiteboard of truth and justice. So what is an accredited investor? Accredited investor has a million dollar net worth, excluding their primary residence, or they make $200,000 a year, or $300,000 a year with a spouse. If you meet one of those three definitions, you become, ta-da, an accredited investor. Now, many of you know that. However, how many of you know that there are two tiers above accredited investor? The next tier is called a qualified client. A qualified client has a 2.1 million dollar net worth, excluding their primary residence. And a qualified purchaser is the next tier, and they have a $5 million net worth, excluding their home, or an entity with $25 million in assets. And yes, there's a few other exemptions that go into these, but that's kind of the general rule. And sad enough, if you don't fit into any of these, you you are by default a non-accredited investor. So most people fall into the non-accredited investor category where you're just here and you are stuck with, and you can't invest in these types of funds. Now, I was just on a call a few minutes ago, and a friend asked me, Bridger, why did the SEC do this? The SEC did this, I believe to protect the little guy. The SEC believes if you have a million dollar net worth, if you're a millionaire, you have a degree of sophistication, you understand the risks of investing, what money is, and if you lose your investment, well, you're still gonna be okay. However, if you're a non-accredited investor, if you're grandma and you've got you know, $10,000 to your name and some slick talking fund manager rolls in with a brand new crypto fund where they're going to short Ethereum and stake it against Binance, whatever crap they're going to do. And they lose your 10 grand. Grandma can't live anymore. 
And so the SEC really cracks down on non-accredited investors because they don't want grandma to lose her money to some slick talking fund manager. Hence, when we talk about these other funds, you're going to have a lot more scrutiny when you take money from non-accredited investors. All right. So back to a Reg D 506 B 35 non-accredited investors, unlimited accredited investors, but you actually get capped on here. Now, something interesting about a 506 B you cannot advertise your fund. That right there is an important rule on 506Bs. That's why you don't see Blackstone, KKR, Sequoia running billboard ads or TV ads to advertise their fund because it's it's illegal for them to do so. And this is why most funds traditionally, you don't hear about them. You don't hear about big funds because it's seriously, it's illegal for them to advertise. They have to raise money by their influence, word of mouth, by meeting people, networking events, parties, all that kind of stuff. They can be introduced through investment advisor, broker dealers, but really it's a, you cannot publicly advertise. You have to use it by your influence and network. Now you might say, oh, there's no way you can raise money. Well, these guys have proven you can raise hundreds of billions, billions and billions, billions of dollars <laughs> through a Reg D 506B. This is the most common fund offering. Blackstone, KKR, Sequoia, these hundred billion dollar funds, Citadel, all use Reg D 506B offerings. Because the nice thing here is you do not have to verify investor status. Now, what does that mean? If an investor comes to you and says, hey, I'm an accredited investor, I would like to invest uh, $250,000. They just have to check a box self-verifying that they are an accredited investor. Versus down here in a 506C, you have to verify their accredited investor status. In a 506C, you have to go through, get tax documents, talk to lawyers, whatever, get a, a paper from them saying and verifying that they're an accredited investor. It's a little more hassle on investors. However, we're gonna move on now to 506C. You can advertise. In a 506C, you can run ads. So you'll see companies now on Instagram and Facebook running ads, hey, invest in our fund, only accredited investor. You've seen Ty Lopez do this, Grant Cardone. Hey, invest, but you have to be an accredited investor and we have to be able to verify you on that status. In a 506C, all investors have to be accredited or above. There's no non-accredited like the Bs, but both of these are under, again, Reg D 506B or Reg D 506C. Is that making sense? You guys following along so far? But wait, Bridger, hold on. I'm losing my mind. Do I only, I'm starting a fund. Can I only have to raise money from accredited investors? Now the answer is typically yes. Most people do this, however, the SEC has come out with recent regulations and guidelines allowing you to raise money from non-accredited investors. So with that being said, let's dive into the other half of the board right here. All right, the first one we're gonna talk about is Reg CF, regulation crowdfunding. Crowdfunding came on the platform after the Dodd-Frank Act. So last about decade, we've seen more crowdfunding sites come online. You've seen Fundrise, you've seen Cardone Capital, or a number of other opportunities online and they're doing a lot of advertising and trying to get non-accredited investors in their offerings. So what goes into a Reg CF? Reg CFs are capped at $5 million to raise. Again, over here, you can raise unlimited amounts of money. Reg CF, you're capped at 5 million. You can raise from any investor. However, non-accredited investors, again, those are the people that aren't millionaires yet. They're less than a million dollars. They can only invest 10% of their net worth or annual earnings. So if someone's got a net worth of $100,000, they can only, the most they can invest is $10,000. Additionally, you have to pre-identify the asset. So they cannot invest into a blind pool. Over here in a 506B, investors can put money into a fund, a pool, and you as a fund manager say, hey, we're gonna use this pool over the next 18 months. We're gonna go buy real estate properties. We're gonna buy 10, 15 properties. We don't, we haven't identified them yet, but we have a team over the next 18 months, we're gonna go buy them. That's not the case in Reg CF. Reg CF, and if you go on to Cardone Capital and they're, they have different offerings, they have some of these offerings, some here and some here. But if you go on to a Fundrise, you'll see they've identified the properties. Hey, we've got a property on this address in Maine. It's uh, you know eight units and you can invest directly into the property. So that's a huge case on pre-identifying properties or businesses you'd like to buy or the whatever asset you're getting into has to be pre-disclosed to the investor. Which leads me to my next point. When you're taking money from non-accredited investors, you have to over-disclose to these non-accredited investors. They want 
the fund managers to go out of their way to really make sure these investors understand what's going on. Similar to, is what the language says, similar to a public company. If you see public companies, they have quarterly earning reports. They have a whole army of of auditors and accountants and things like that to publish information to the street, to, to publicize what they're doing. Similar things have to happen in a reg CF or the next group. And I'm going to drop my my lines are getting thrown all around over here. The next group is called a reg a offering here and both follow these similar guidelines. So a reg a fund very similar to the reg CF fund. You have to pre-identify you can raise from non-accredited, but you have to over disclose same with the 10% rule for any investor. However, reg a has tier one and tier two tier two is what most people do. And you can raise up to 75 million dollars. They call this a mini IPO. I was actually on Instagram a few days ago and I saw a reg. It said, Hey, we're doing a reggae offering for a brand new robotics company that we want to raise money for. So they, they issue shares and there's a lot of ways to structure it inside of a reg a offering. But again, they follow the same principles here. So again, back to the question, Bridger, can I raise money from non-accredited investors? The answer is yes. Okay. You can follow the reg CF, the reg a, or you can take 35 non-accredited here. However, you have to do a lot more work on your end to make sure those investors are over disclosed. So I'll tell you a quick story on one of my, actually my very first fund, I had a buddy of mine. He gave me, I think it was about $5,000 for my fund, non-accredited investor. He was going to fill up one of my 35 non-accredited ones. And I, you know, over disclosed to him, all this kind of stuff. So he gives me five grand and we're raising money for this thing. And he gives it to me like on a Wednesday, Friday morning, he gives me a phone call. Bridger, hey, how's the fun doing? How's the five grand doing? I said, hey, it's great. We're just getting started. Like, don't worry about it. Like, we're good, you know? Okay, awesome. Hangs up. He's all excited. Uh, the following Tuesday, Bridger, hey, how's the five grand doing? What's going on? He goes, and then he goes, hey, um, you know, I'm actually looking to, you know, maybe get a, an investment property. My mortgage payment's come and due. I don't know if I can cover it. Is there, a, like, how soon am I going to get the money out for the, I might need the five grand here pretty soon. And I looked at him. I said, I love you to death but this is just not for you. I, I'm, I'm going to give you your money back. And he goes, whoa, I know I don't want my money. No, no. I'm like, this is, we're done. Here's your money back. I don't need your five grand. If you're going to be stressed out about making a mortgage payment, this is not the right investment for you. I'm going to give back your five grand. And it was just too much of a hassle to deal with him. Most managers that I meet with say very similar stories. The non-accredited investor, the average, by the way, we actually looked it up, average reg CF and reg A investor invests about $250 is the average investment size in a reg CF or a reg A offering. That's it. So imagine you're trying to raise uh, $2 million for a building. $2 million at 250 people a pop. Okay. Think about the accounting, the taxes, the K1s you've got to file at the end of the year. It's a lot more expensive to run a CF or a reg A fund to set it up, to get it started. I I would argue it's probably about double the cost of a reg D fund startup style. And yes, you can vary costs all over the place, but an average reg D fund, 25 grand, 30 grand for setup fees and docs. Okay. And ongoing maintenance every year. And, you know, and we talk startup fund level, you know, you're looking anywhere from like six grand to maybe 15 grand ongoing maintenance for every year. Reg CF, reg A, you're looking at ah, 45, 50, 60 grand startup fees and probably 25 to 30 grand ongoing maintenance to, to file all those things. Now that's a, those vary drastically there. I've seen some reg D funds that cost a quarter million dollars, half million dollars, right? They vary, but I'm talking startup fund level where you're at now. I'll give you my two cents, what to pick. If you have a strategic advantage for advertising, for a, a building a list, for building um, a type of an audience, and you're gonna do multiple properties or investments in down the road. I mean, look at Fundrise, look at Cardone Capital. They, they, they're building a whole brand and team around doing and cycling these properties. If that's your goal, and you wanna become a marketing company along with a fund, a reg CF and a reg A are great options. Okay. You're going to build a brand, probably your first deal. Let's call it a $2 million property. You're not going to make a lot of money on that first or second deal because you got to set up the infrastructure. All the fixed costs are going to weigh you down so much that you, you personally won't take a home, a lot of money. However, if you're going to be like Fundrise and you're going to do a few, I don't know, hundred properties a year on this platform and this product offering you're building, then bam, reg CFs are awesome. Uh, Reg A funds. 
If you're going to, you want to do a mini IPO for your company, you got a robotics company. These can be great, really a lot cheaper than going with an investment bank and IPOing. But as far as a fund, if you're trying to raise capital for, uh, you're going to buy businesses, you're going to scale a crypto fund, you're going to trade futures, options, almond farms, whatever it is, there's a reason why most funds do the 506B or 506C over here. Unlimited amounts of capital. I would recommend going after accredited investors or above just because of the <laughs> disclosures and the annoyance and the just the bothersome, um, by the nature of who these guys are, uh, these non-accredited investors, it's just, it's hard to work with them. I would, I for all my funds, we've done Reg B, 506B or 506C. And um, now you can weigh the pros and cons here. We have other videos there, but that's what I've seen. And that's why most funds, this is the scalable amount. Unless again, you've got a marketing strategy, you can go reg CF or reg A. Hey, if you guys like this video, subscribe below, uh, hit the like button, comment for $100 giveaways, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks, bye.